Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining um, this course. Uh, with the pretentious name of Development University is, is exactly that. It's how to be a developer. And I'll start by simply addressing the question of why, why are we doing this course? Uh, and the simple answer is because a lot of people asked. And one of the downsides of being a reasonably high profile, well-known person, uh, for whatever controversial reasons that may be, is that people are always asking, they want, they want a bit of your time, you know? And, and we all have 24 hours in the day. I have no more than that. And so after many, many years of people wanting to just get together and chat and, you know, buy me a coffee and learn how to be a developer, which seemed like a pretty inadequate price for teaching them how to be a developer, I figured, well, let's set up a course. David and I got to talking, and so here we are. So on your screen, you'll see a, just that the introduction now, and we're going to step up. Um, we're going to step to the first slide here, which is the Candy Factory Lofts, and as David mentioned, Toronto Life Magazine did call the Candy Factory the eighth most important event in Toronto's history, which is pretty amazing for a condominium project, but it really was, because a Candy Factory was the first major uh, urban loft condo. In fact, it, it changed the entire mood of downtown from being an office-oriented nine to five downtown Toronto to, to being a, a dynamic place to live. And the Candy Factory brought that character and personality. Before the 90s, condominiums in Toronto were pretty much an apartment building. No character, nothing different. And after the Candy Factory, Toronto condominiums became uh, really the design hub of condominiums in the world. And con Toronto is now the leading condominium market in the world. So. Candy Factory was a place that started that. These are just some images from the Candy Factory. Here's a place. Here's an image inside the Candy Factory. This is the classic before picture, and as you can see, a pretty beaten up, rundown building. And we took this space. We didn't design the building. We didn't create the idea. We just cleaned it up and turned it into some pretty elegant, dramatic, warm spaces that have been winning design awards. Now, the Graphic Arts Building, the next one you see on the screen, again was a conversion. It was a historic building in downtown Toronto, basically the corner of Bay and Richmond Street, and we turned it into a loft condominium. It was abandoned. Can you believe that? A building in the financial district of Toronto abandoned, and we converted it from office spaces, which it really was with, you know, by the time we took it over in 2000, it had the T-bar drop ceilings and the industrial carpet on the floor and fluorescent lights, really, really boring office cubicles inside very grand front door, you'd think it must be pretty grand inside, and all it was was, as I say, drop ceiling. We took down those ceilings, we scraped the carpet off the floor, and we found white marble and coffered ceilings and brass rails. This was already there, so that's what I do, is I restore, revitalize old buildings. High Park Lofts was based on an old church in the Roncesvalles area of West Toronto, the first geothermal condo. In the, in the province, actually. Uh, really grand spaces inside, modern lofts, but uh, again, the theme. One King West was probably the most distinctive building I've done. It's a 51-story, 574-suite condo hotel right at the corner of King & Young in downtown Toronto. Grand rooms, this was the banking hall in One King when we bought the building. This room was essentially abandoned. It had been used by the TD Bank for storing files boxes of files for 20 years. You can believe a room like that just being used to store things. So we turned it, when we opened the condo hotel, we turned it into a grand banquet room like this. And it is booked nonstop with weddings and banquets and such. Again, we took a room that existed and we simply brought it back to life. And that's what I do with buildings. I bring them back to life. This building was, this is a room again in One King West. This was the chairman's boardroom from the TD Bank before they moved over to the TD Center. And we added that paneling, we added the gold ceiling, we added the, the lights there came actually from Home Depot. We created the history within the building because it seemed like it should have been there. This is a building that I've just bought in Niagara Falls, New York. It is a hotel on the U.S. side. As you can see from the picture, it's right on the edge of the falls. Again, the American side, we have a casino beside us, a convention center behind us. Um, you know, Niagara Falls in front of us, Niagara Falls State Park just across the bridge there. If you want to go to Canada, it's two blocks away to the Rainbow Bridge. Pretty amazing location. 
we bought this building at a foreclosure auction for a couple of million dollars. That's for the whole hotel with 20,000 feet of function space, 2,000 feet of banqueting, 200 rooms, as is within the ballrooms, the chandeliers were there, the wood floors were there. That was a pretty darn good deal for two million bucks. Two million bucks in Toronto gets you what? A two-bedroom condominium downtown or a little house in Leaside? Here we are at the Stinson School. Uh, this really was called the Stinson School. I didn't make it up. It's not a Donald Trump ego trip. Uh, it was called the Stinson School because it's located on Stinson Street and it's called Stinson Street because the whole neighborhood was developed by a gentleman by the name of Ebenezer Stinson, if you can believe that name, uh, in the 1830s. This building was built in 1894. We took it over a few years ago, bought the entire city block with this building on it for a million dollars for the whole block and converted into 66 loft condominiums, added a wing in between the two schools there, four stories, um, you know, exposed the brick, exposed the beams, created some really dramatic spaces within this building. Uh, and those suites now are selling for from 300,000 to 700,000. So essentially we took a million dollar purchase of an existing building and turned it into $22 million worth of lofts. A building with real character, as you can see. And again, that, that's what I do. As I don't create this, I find it, I reveal it, I restore it. There's an old classroom. There's a new suite, same space, just back and forth here. Granite counters, big new windows, all restored. See the exposed beams and structure of the building. This is a building now that we're just starting on and will be actually part of the course we're gonna talk about. This is the Gibson School. The Gibson School is also in Hamilton. It's a few blocks away from the Stinson School. It was built at the same time. Uh, right now, that's what it looks like. It's been unused for a few years. We only bought it a few months ago. They added a gymnasium to the front, pretty ugly as you can see, uh, and uh, we're going to convert it into 106 loft condominiums plus six townhouses. There you can see the converted version back to before. There's the after. We've opened up the gym, added six townhouses in there, and added a two-story penthouse to the building. So this was bought for $1.8 million, a little bit more, but three years have passed since the Stinson School. Um, so, and we have 106 units here versus 66 at the Stinson School. So again, we're buying amazing properties at really, really low prices, and all we do is restore them. It's not like we have to add the walls or anything. They're there. Huge hallways, the maple floors are in place, the big windows, the exposed brick walls. You know, this is existing character. We just turn them into, into the lofts condos. There's another view of it. You can see where we landscaped the front, added some retail, little cafe to the front there. Quite handsome. We're actually, this is an odd one. Most people are worried about heritage buildings, historic buildings. Oh gosh, you got to deal with the heritage board and that must be terrible. So don't touch those buildings. We're actually applying to have this building designated historic. It's not designated historic right now, but we want it designated historic. Why? Because that gets me quality qualified for all kinds of grants and loans and incentives from the city. I save millions of dollars on the construction if it's a historically designated building. I actually like it to be designated historic. There's the building now. We're just starting to clean it, as you can see there, washing the dirt, the, the, washing the bricks off. And they're going from dark brown to actually the light orange, which you can see there. That's the color that it was. That's the color that it will be when we clean it all off. Here's an example of a building I'm looking at in Buffalo right now. This is a train station and it is a train station that's bigger than Union Station. It's a million square feet. It's about 16 acres of land surrounding it. Uh, it has been abandoned for 40 years. Inside spectacular space but again it's been empty for 40 years and we're negotiating to buy this from the city of Buffalo and I won't tell you what we're going to do with it but it's going to be a pretty cool place. This is a building in Buffalo as well. This is a Statler Hotel. And I'm just using this one as an example. This is sort of a, a rub it in. I use this to inspire myself and rub it in. I missed this building by two months. I did not know that this building was available. And it sold, again, a million square feet for $250,000. That's 250 in the thousands for tax arrears. That's all for the whole building. It was not like the candy factory. This is what it was like inside. I mean, that chandelier has got to be worth a few bucks a lot. These are the sort of buildings I love to acquire because they just have the character, but nobody knows what to do with them. 
So now we're going to take this from the grand buildings. You're probably thinking, what's the point of taking a course from a developer who does these huge things way beyond my capacity as an individual? Well, that's not really what the course is about. The course is taken down to an individual level. So we're going to move back to Hamilton. And these two houses across the street from Stinson School. They are literally facing the Stinson School. We bought these as part of our project, but they weren't completed yet. So I'm going to take these two houses and restore them and renovate them and turn them into this little development where you can see the two houses. The one on the left has basically just been completely restored and renovated. The one on the right, we've added a floor. Go back here. You can see we've taken the top off the building, added a floor to it, and then we've plopped in a semi-detached townhouse in the middle, so two units there. In the end, we will have 11 units in these two houses, so we're doing a small-scale development that is well within the range of the individual. We bought these houses for $225,000. That's it. We will generate $2 million worth of units from these houses. This is something that you, <laughs> you, know, you can do at home. This is within the range of the average individual or a couple of people to do. So this, this little redevelopment will be part of the course. This will be the case study that you will participate in as part of the course. So, introducing developer you. This is not an introductory presentation. I am not doing a free course and then you go to the course and I sell you the next course for 5000 and then you get the super advanced course for 10000 and all you've done is spend $15,000. This is a course that really will help you over the course of an entire year learn how to do a little development and it will be very practical and hands-on. I am a developer. The only reason I'm doing this course is to, to sort of politely deal with the many, many people who want me to tell them how to be a developer and, you know, compensate myself slightly for it. So the course is quite economic uh, and it's very, very practical. Once a month for a year. Um, so my passion, again, is the real estate side of it, not just being on stage. That's what I do in a day-to-day -day business. I'm going to teach you what the developer actually does. Now, what you'll find out from this course is that the developer's role is really more of a choreographer. The developer takes advice and input and experience and events and steers through this minefield that is the development business. It's not so glamorous behind the scenes and it can be pretty scary at times, but by the end of the course, you'll realize that it, you know, it it's possible, and it's possible at, at the personal level. I'm going to explain to all the team members, all the people who are working, the consultants, the contractors, the architects, the suppliers, the trades, the politicians, the locals, all the people, and they will be part of the course. So it's not just me. There will be a major politician there. The former mayor of Hamilton, Larry Diani, is going to be part of the course. My architect from Stinson School, John DeSimone, will be working on it. He's actually now working for Tim Hortons during their stores. Um, there will be lawyers. There will be a finance broker. You'll have lots of people participating in this course, so you'll be able to get direct answers from them. The case studies, we're going to talk about One King West, we're going to talk about the Stinson School, we're going to talk, talk about all some really behind the scenes, you know, well, some dirty laundry. You're going to get some, some interesting stories out of this one, and you will participate in this actual, in this actual project, the little schools. Uh, the core of the program will be the little, program, little uh, project across the street. Every month we will update, every month you will see the progress, every month we will tell you what we're doing, what went wrong, what went right, and we'll, see you, we'll show you the actual construction parts. Here's the schedule. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front that we've decided to amend this schedule a little bit. I did a presentation on this course actually on Monday night of this week to a quite a large group in Toronto. A lot of people signed up and many of them made a suggestion, uh, which we're going to incorporate, but um, and I'll tell you about that change as we get through this schedule here. The first course, which is October 1st, uh, and they're Saturday mornings, by the way, the first session will be the introduction. We'll review the little project across the street. We'll just, you know, talk about all the design, all the decisions that went into it. So you'll, we'll be sort of at square one with this development because we're just starting it right now. The second session will be at the Hotel Niagara in Niagara Falls, uh, behind the scenes tour. We'll show you the hotel before the construction starts, and then we're going to go back again next spring in June to see it after, just before it opens. So that's going to be quite an interesting transition. And when we're in Niagara, Buffalo area, we will, we're will we trying to organize a little bus tour here to show you a lot of the interesting real estate, including that railway station uh, in Buffalo. So that's going to be a full day uh, in late October. In November, we're into planning and politics. You know, you can't fight City Hall. Well, 
you, unfortunately, you have to deal with City Hall. You can't get around that. So we're going to have the planners dealing it from the outside. From the inside, Mayor Larry will be there to tell you from both sides because he's now doing planning consulting. And we'll tell you about all the little battles and the, the script that you go through when you are dealing with the residents association, with the councillor, all these individuals. December, a very, very important one, which is financing. Uh, if you don't control the wallet, I don't care how large or small the project is, if you do not control the financing of the project, uh, you know, it's, there's no such thing as a partner, there's no such thing as a joint venture. You've got to control the money in the project or you will not make any money, you will get squeezed out and we'll tell you why and how. In January, we're going to go to Gibson School to that project I showed you a picture of, behind the scenes as the construction starts to see the, see the, the challenges we face structurally and design-wise and our builder will be there, an architect will be there, and we'll, we'll walk you through that huge building and, and discuss the elements. Uh, in February, architecture and interior design, both outside and inside, the things to add, the things you shouldn't add, the things that people really like, um, you know, how to add value economically. Uh, then we get into construction and trades. Uh, you know, you'll hear from the contractors of trades there, their advice on, on what to do. Um, sales and marketing, obviously important, what's cost effective, uh, what's necessary, what's not necessary, uh, how to do this cost effectively, you know, because with, with the internet now you can, case studies and inside stories. I'm going to try and hold that one actually at One King West rather than at Stinson School just for the, for the atmosphere on it. Um, and we're trying to make arrangements now. I've been talking to Chris Hume, who's a picture critic of the star, and very, very vocal about the condominium industry. And he's looking forward to participating in this as well. So we decided to put that one downtown so Chris can pop right over. Back to the Hotel Niagara to see it just before it opens. Gibson School again to see how it's progressed in terms of construction. And then this last one called Bring a Project to School Day will be a session where you know, we will actually go through your project and analyze your projects and your individual, you know, perhaps your reason for joining this course. So when I said there might be a little change in the, in the schedule, this is the little change. What we're going to do is bring that to the beginning of the course. So not only at the beginning will we talk about the little houses across the street and how that project will go, but we'll also at that time go through the, the whole, the whole uh, participants in the, in the course. We'll ask everybody to explain to the, to the group uh, why it is they're there and what little project they have in mind. So we'll actually be able to, to incorporate into the year-long course uh, elements that will be useful to you and it'll give me actually a lot of help in terms of, of structuring the content to be more practical for you as we go along. So we'll, we're going to make a, this a little plastic and, and modify it to suit people's purposes. Uh, suggestions are welcome. This is not a big course. This is not for you know a thousand people in the Hilton ballroom somewhere. This is probably a few dozen people in a classroom. So it's very hands-on, it's very practical, it's very personalized. Um, is it going to be practical and useful for you? Yes, it is. The topics we just went through. How much does a course cost? Well, here, here's the usual thing. Uh, the course cost is $39.95, $3,995 for a year, and that's a pretty damn good deal. You know, 300 bucks a session, which considering, considering that breakfast is included, you never know, that's like breakfast at the Four Seasons alone, uh, which this is not, of course. Uh, so $39.95 is the cost of the course. However, there's a little optional way you can do this, so I'll leave it on this slide for the moment, um, which essentially makes the course free. And what do I mean by that? If you choose to invest $10,000 in this little project, which, you know, simply you can actually you can take it out of your RSP. That's a neat little trick here. If you put a $10,000 deposit into this little project across the street from your RSP, at the end of the course, you will get your $10,000 back 100%, no deduction. There'll be some, if you use the RSP angle, a little bit be a few hundred dollars in RSP fees, but essentially the course then will be completely free. Your 10,000 deposit will become part of that development. So essentially you become part of the financing of, the, of that little project and you get the course for free. So that's the little angle on that. It is RSP eligible. So $39.95, write a check or 10,000 as a deposit and you get it back in full. Um, so we've dealt with some of these elements here, what the topics will be covered. Um, and the cost of the course, again, call it 100 bucks if you do the $10,000 route because you could have maybe put it in the bank and earned 1%. Um, 
if you choose to put more into the little project, if you choose to invest a little more in the project, you actually will start to generate interest at 10 to 20 percent, depending on the amount you invest. So I guess the attitude I have to this is, this course is for people who are considering doing a little development. And number one, uh, I guess, test for whether you should be a developer is, can you handle the stress of having some skin in the game? Because you should not go into the development business without thinking that you're going to have to put some money in. It is stressful. You are going to have to have a financial investment in this. You cannot do a development based on no money down. You can't have a development partner who puts up the money and you do the work. It just does not work. And we will go into that in the financing side. If unless you are the financial principal in the development, you are not a developer. You are not a partner. You are an employee because the person who puts up the money is the person who will make the money. And you will end up with perhaps a handful of magic beans at the end of the project. I got to tell you how important that is. So that's basically my summary on the course. And I'm going to turn it back to David or open the lines here so we can answer some questions. But just to wind up again on it, this course is to help you become a developer in a modest way. It's not about 51-story towers. It's not about train stations. It is about a small development, which could be a house. It could be a small commercial property. It could be a duplex, a triplex, a 10-unit rental property. It's not about selling condos. It's about the development process of buying a property and making making use of it in a different way. That's how you add value. That's how developers make money. And I'll tell you that at the end of the course, you will come away with such a different perspective and such an amount of insights as to all the elements here. One of the most interesting things you will find during the course is that a lot of the people you'll be listening to, not just me, but the architect, the planner, the consultant, the trades, the plumber, the electrician, all the various people be speaking to the course. When you listen to them, you'll start to think, you know, that, that isn't what the guy before said. The planner said this. The politician said that. I don't know. This is very confusing. This isn't a very good course. Everybody's contradicting each other. Well, this is exactly what being a developer is all about. You have to listen to all these inputs, and they are contradictory. What the politician says is the right thing to do is not necessarily in your interest. What the local and residents associations say is definitely not in your interest. What the contractor would like you to do is probably not financially in your interest. The architect and the designer, they definitely have a different agenda. And it's, you know, it's to make something grand and wonderful and expensive and the hell with the budget. Then what the customer wants and what the realtor wants, what everybody wants for their part of this development is all valid for you to listen to. But in the end, you will have to play the role of Solomon. You will have to be Judge Judy. You will have to be the person who listens to them all and says, okay, I heard you all. This is what we're going to do. And I guarantee you that a lot of those consultants and people involved will say, oh, it's stupid. This guy's nuts. This developer's crazy. You know, developers generally are a little crazy in a way. That's part of the process. You have to be able to steer through the minefield. It's like the pilot of the ship. You can get a map for a harbor, but why do they always hire a pilot to go through the harbor? because there are strange currents and there are hidden reefs and there are things that happen, there are winds that blow. The developer's role is to make this thing happen, to steer it through the rocky you know, shoulder, to not hopefully be an Italian cruise ship captain and to get to the other side and actually make some money on it. Uh, so I think I've covered it all there, David, and I'm going to turn it back to you for direction. Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> Harry, is there an opportunity for people to um, take you know, either some or all of the classes remotely if they can't make it um, to the uh, to the classes. Yes, we will be uh, filming the course each time, each session, although it's three hours each time, so it's a long filming. Um, and we will have it online. We will arrange a, a link up, but um, it just won't be the same. You know, it, it's like... It's like trying to buy tomatoes online. It's just, you can't quite squeeze them. And part of the value of this course is the ability to be face-to-face -face in the same room with the architect, with the politician, with all, all your fellow classmates, with myself, uh, and to sort of interact and ask those questions as they occur to you. Because as, as interesting as this technology is, it just doesn't have, have that same dynamic. And you just won't get the same inflections 
Um, so yes, you can do it. If you miss it, we'll tape it, absolutely. We'll try and hook it up Skype-wise. Um, but I strongly suggest if you can make it, come directly. But there's no question, online or direct, uh, you'll get value out of this. Okay, Harry, it's unique to offer a course that is actually spanning a full year, um, you know, roughly once a month. How did you come to the decision to offer the classes in that, in that way over a long period of time? Because what, I'm, what we are learning about here is the development process. And the development process is not day trading. I mean, we live in a world where everything is like Twitter, you know, <laughs> 150 characters or whatever it is, a split second. The development business is, is a very old-fashioned and different business. It takes time. And you will, this is, the, this course is the life of a little development. It's the shortest development I could think of is this conversion of a house. And so you will see it from what it is now, which is actually a somewhat beaten up shell inside, to a really cool new building that people will walk into and appreciate it. And you will have to go through that process of the, you know, the committee of adjustment, the design and permit process, the sales process, the construction process. You cannot compress development into a YouTube 10 minute video. You can't you can't sort of give people this this Coles Notes version of how to be a developer. The only way you're going to learn this is by participating in this. We will do things through this course that that we will be we will be learning ourselves in a sense. We will make application to the city. We will get feedback from the city, and they will come up with the usual idiotic comments from the public works department. We will run into issues with the neighbors. We will run into issues with the construction. We will find problems that. We we have to solve. That's what you're learning as part of the course. You know, it's it, you cannot compress that into a weekend seminar. It just doesn't have the same impact. So okay. you, this is a useful course. The intent of this course is, is to teach you something, not to take your money. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the most unique courses I've ever seen because um, uh, most people who teach courses, like they have a, just a set curriculum, it's all about the course. But in this particular course, uh, people are actually going to step through a variety of your projects and they can choose to uh, sign on like a regular course for thirty nine ninety five, um, which is a pretty good deal for a course uh, like this, or they can choose to invest in the project and get all their money back. So that's uh, that's pretty amazing well, yeah, opportunity. Actually, <laughs> well, it is, but that's sort of the test number one. Ten grand is not a lot of money, and ten grand that you get back a hundred percent is is an even better deal. And it is secured by a mortgage on the property and. You know, we already own the property, so we're not using this to go and buy the properties. It's just going to be part of the construction money. And the trade-off is that you know, you're not getting interest on the money as if there was 1% in the bank anyways. Um, so I'm not paying you interest on your money, but I'm giving you a free course. So it's a trade-off either way. We, we found people actually were had a bit of a challenge wrapping their head around that unique concept. So a lot of people go, well, just, just what's the cost of the course? All right, fine. The cost of the course is thirty nine ninety five. I'd rather you invest it in the project because, man, it'll focus your interest. Right. So if you're investing in the project, it's in the way it's like they're, you know, they're, they're part of it. So they're going to be really interested, well, especially in these walkthroughs and, and to know what's going on. And, and they'll be able to, uh, almost like a partner. I mean, uh, where in as much as that they'll be wow. following it um, as it progresses and and seeing seeing how it happens firsthand. Yes, and they'll be part of the, the, the hiccups and how we solve the hiccups. Let me put it in this this sort of context. Um, I assume most people on the call will you know have a family or kids and. Until you have kids, you don't really understand what people are talking about with kids. Until you have kids, when someone in the office you know, shows you a picture of their kid, you just roll your eyes and say, oh, Jesus, that is so tiresome. You know, it isn't the same thing. You can't understand how to raise kids until you have kids. 
There's no, I can't, don't care what the books say. Until you have kids and you understand the stresses and strains uh, and the unique things that happen, you never really understand the process. It cannot be really taught that way. And the development world is very much the same. Until you've been through the challenges, which are, which are daily, and the developer's job is to simply deal with those challenges every day. The developer's job is not to sit in meetings and just sort of, you know, look important and drive around in a big fancy BMW and, and hire exotic designers. And the developer's role is much more meat and potatoes. It's much more mundane. In fact, it's very stressful because you're constantly having to make judgment calls, constantly having to decide between differing inputs and constantly having to trade off dollar factors. It, it's one big long gamble until the whole thing closes and you get your money back. So Harry, um, um, tell you know, us again. Yes, there are millions of dollars that... Um, please, what, what is the start date? Because it's starting very soon, I think. So we just want to, if people are, are considering uh, jumping very on... Very soon. Yeah. First weekend. First weekend of October. Okay, so it's starting very soon. There are. So if you look at your little calendar there, it's October fourth. Okay, and there are um, a few October seats 4th, we, left. We are, yes, we you know we didn't. I, I don't want to do this in a major. It's it's only going to be about you know three dumb people, and uh, so we're we're pretty close to it now. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm not in the seminar business to me whether this is the first time we've done this. And so I don't want to do it on a major scale as yet, but the response has been really good, and, and I will do it again, but next time it'll be uh, a little more expensive and uh, perhaps a lot less personal than this, than this first round will be. And Harry, you said uh, three dozen people roughly are already signed up? Yes. Okay, so um, you have a good group and you're you're ready to go. Uh, we have a no, question. Actually, what I what I said, what I said actually, David, was that that will be the size of the group. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, okay, very good. We have a question from so we're, Frank. We're, uh, he says, um, "What time on Saturdays will the course start and end?" Uh, basically, it's nine to twelve. 9 to 12 on Saturdays. Okay. It's great. Saturday morning. I, I, let's, in practice, once I get rolling, it'll probably be 9 to 1. <laughs> okay. Um, but the sessions, for example, the session in Niagara Falls will be a full day. Okay. Um, are you able to put that slide up again that shows the, the dates, and, or at least the first couple of uh, dates and locations? Um, so October 4th, and that's uh, focusing on the mansions, which is across the street from you. So that's in Hamilton, October 4th, Saturday. You said 9 to 12, yes? Yes, and, yes, but, yes David, but that course, that first day, will also be at that time we are going to ask everybody to explain what, uh, what they have in mind, uh, explain little project that they're working on, give us a little bit about their background, so it'll help us to to tailor the rest of the course content. And the, many, many people have asked this already. If we can do that sort of that uh, introduction at the beginning, so that it'll it'll help them to the rest of the project. So we will incorporate on the October fourth one not only the, the the overview of the mansions, but the the personalized. Uh, each person will introduce their their background objective and their project. And we've got a good cross-section. We have architects, we have engineers, we have finance people. The people who are on this course are, are not doing it because they're looking for something to do on Saturday morning. They have a, a real interest in this process and in many cases are working in the field already. Okay, Harry, I'm just going to um, take back the controls for a moment. Or actually, I'm going to give people this uh, link. Um, if anyone wants to reserve a spot, they can do so uh, by going to uh, this web page here. I'm going to uh, put this page up for people. Um, for $500, you can reserve your spot on the course. Uh, you don't have to decide tonight whether you want to sign up for the 
39.95 version or whether you want to invest you can decide that a little bit later harry what if somebody wants to go in at 39.95 and then they come to you uh you know a little bit later once they get to know you a bit like i have and and uh and then they say uh, harry you know we 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 want to invest fine okay so they can no problem they can invest will they will they be able to credit the 3995 to or, towards their investment or is it too late at that point no we'll just credit we'll just offset it okay yeah. so they so they, they, they would put that. in another 60 you know. Okay, so it's a great way to um, uh, get to know you a little bit because I know once people get to know you and see uh, how you work, because every time I come down there, um, I'm amazed at uh, how your office runs there. Uh, you're really uh, a very hands-on developer, and uh, I know that um, that's a great education opportunity and for those uh, who want to uh, give it a shot, a great investment opportunity as well. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, Hamilton, um, Harry, and while you're doing it, I'm just going to take back the screen because I found this amazing uh, picture of the um, the, uh, the annual art crawl. I know there's a monthly art crawl that, that takes place, and uh, I'm going to uh, show people this screen because it's 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 astounding what was going on there, and this is just um, uh, last week, so. Um, you should be able to see this. This is uh, the second Friday of every month. There's an art crawl, and this is the annual event. What what's happening in Hamilton? If you know people are thinking about investing in your projects or in Hamilton, why is it is it a good is it a good time? Well, this this the art crawl. <laughs> The, um, it's actually more of a music crawl, a fur crawl event, which happens every September, uh, and in the art crawls every every month. Um, you know, it's a music and art event, and there's 150,000 people this last weekend at the event. Uh, Hamilton has basically become the equivalent of Queen West in Toronto, uh, largely because Queen West has become so expensive that a lot of the entertainment, music and film and uh, movie uh, and TV have moved to Hamilton. Uh, so. The arts and culture scene here is really quite dynamic. Uh, Hamilton, Hamilton's major challenge has been its image as a, you know, a rundown industrial town, and the steel mills are closing, and therefore the world has come to an end. Well, the steel mills really sort of stopped being part of the economy in a major way several decades ago. I mean, it was at one stage there was upwards of 40, 50,000 people working in the steel mills here. Well. U.S. Steel is just restructuring now, and you know they sort of revealed that their current workforce is 800 people. You know, so in a workforce of, of in this area, 400,000 people in the Hamilton region, 800 people doesn't really have a major impact on the economy. Half of the people, 200,000 of those 400 approximately, are working in the universities and hospitals here. It's it's a medical and academic town now, Hamilton. So the demographic is actually quite contemporary. Uh, quite young, uh, and uh, it's just starting out. It's just starting to recover, uh, and uh, so the the price opportunities here, as I mentioned, we bought those schools for the you know the cost of a of a house in Toronto, and yet we're selling condo lofts in there for three hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars. So you know the market has really done a, a radical shift in the last two years. It is not overpriced and just getting started right now. Uh, but you'll be astonished the opportunities in Hamilton. So all those people, yeah, look at them. I mean, this isn't these aren't old steel workers with their lunch pails. These are actually young people at a at a concert. This was taken from the stage. And actually, on the main street of Hamilton, this is James Street. <laughs> so that they they closed the main street for this festival. That's how serious the city takes it. Uh, Harry, there's uh, an, an event uh, happening in the city. Um, was it the Olympics uh, happening or, or at Tim Hortons stadiums? They're they're totally revitalizing the downtown. Well, the now. Pan Am games. Pan Am games. Uh, the the Pan, 
The Pan Am games are, are not only in Toronto, they're in Hamilton because Hamilton actually has the soccer part of the games and soccer is the most attended part of the games. So um, the Pan Am Stadium, which is now the Tim Hortons Field, uh, is um, just opened actually last week, um, so it's ready <laughs> nearly um, for, this, for the games next summer and as a result of that, uh, the city is plugging a lot of money into restoring certain parts of the city. They're building a new GO train station on Barton Street, uh, which is uh, coincidentally where I'm doing the Gibson School. So uh, the stadium is uh, just to the east of us. The, the station is just to the west of us. So we're right on that corridor now that people will be taking to go from the station to the stadium. So Barton Street is going to go through quite a dramatic uh, metamorphosis in the next year. So our timing on that is pretty darn good. Uh, Harry, my, my, yeah, my sense is, Harry, is that you're about to, to do, uh, to help Hamilton complete what, what you did in Toronto. I, I think you have a sixth uh, sense, and uh, what you did to, to, with Toronto and downtown Toronto and Queen Street. Um, my feeling is, is that the timing is, is just right on this, and uh, what we have here is an amazing opportunity for people to learn. Um, and to invest. So I have posted this um, uh, website there, realestate.hub. People, you should see it in your, uh, in your chat side, uh, on the side of the screen. And if you go to that page, um, it explains here what the opportunity is here. If you want to reserve your spot, you can do so now by putting in a $500 deposit. Um, if you change your mind, uh, within 10 days, you can get your money back minus a $35 admin fee, but it will save your yourself a, a spot. I've also put in my phone number there, 416-876-2031. And if you've been re receiving my emails, you probably have my number in about 10 places because I've been um, advertising the, this uh, webinar for the last event. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, post them on the chat now, um, and we'll be happy to hear. Otherwise, uh, you can give me a call at that number, and I'll connect you with Harry and um, make sure that you get uh, all your uh, questions answered. Harry, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we finish off? Well, uh, yeah, just to sum up on the course, it is a year long. It is probably the most content you're going to get out of any course that's out there in the market. I see people spending $5,000 to go to a weekend boot camp uh, that basically after the weekend, I'm not sure that they're any further ahead because they're with a giant mob of people um, and they've talked about generalities. We are not talking about generalities. This course will be specifics. It will be personalized, it will be practical, it will be behind the scenes. We're not going to tell you like they do in the courses that this is your magic bullet, no problem, just buy the course and you become a millionaire overnight. Um, we're going to tell you about the, the tough part of it. And I would subtitle this course, in fact, you know, why you might not want to be a developer. Because, you know, that could be darn good value. <laughs> actually spending the time to, to properly assess what's really involved in the development business and whether in fact it is for you because it's not for a lot of people. It's a very, very tough business and there's a lot of tricks to the trade and you will not get these tricks in a book and nobody is going to tell you because it is, uh, it is an art and it's not cut out for everybody. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be in real estate. I'm going to teach you a lot of ways to make good money in real estate and not necessarily by being the developer but you are going to get a darn good inside view of the small and the large developments and how to do them, whether you should do them, what's involved in them, what are the real risks, what are the real responsibilities of the developer. Harry, I know you say that uh, sm bigger is not always better. Um, you know, if somebody takes this, right. takes this course, what would be a, a realistic um, uh, target for them, let's say, once they learn uh, for them, what kind of developments would a newbie uh, person um, should target? Uh, well, again, the, the actual development we're doing is a small one, so uh, that project across the street is got a retail sales value of just under two million dollars, 
and we acquired the houses each for 225 so half a million dollars for the property and it'll cost us maybe six hundred thousand dollars to restore them uh, and put them back in service so there's actually a pretty damn big margin on that so it may not be impressive to show two houses and a little infill but that's got an excellent margin and markup on it which you as an individual can do a 51 story building maybe a hundred and fifty million dollar project but it's beyond most people's level of, of financing and it's just as easy to lose twenty million dollars on a project of that scale doing a lot of small projects can actually be much more profitable and I'm going to teach you to try and keep it within the range that you don't get over your head that you can do it yourself and you can you know at, you, most people could could actually cover them in the, the logistics of a little project we have a question from JR he's saying some don't of don't have to do a big project he says some of the monthly dates show Saturday and Monday what does that mean Yes, we offered people the option of either Saturday morning or Monday evening. Uh, so far, everybody's wanted Saturday morning. So realistically, it's Saturday morning. Unless this entire group of people suddenly decide they want it Monday night, um, we found that the weekends are better for people. Okay, very good. Um, okay, well, that's uh, great, Harry. Thank you very much for your time. Again, people, um, I've posted the, uh, the website, uh, Real Estate Hub. TV development course. Um, I'll just post it one more time in case it's um, raised up there in the uh, in the in the thing. Okay, so you have it there. Um, feel you know, free. Thing, yeah, go one, ahead, Harry. Go David, ahead, David. Yes, David. One little. I understand that a, a good number of the people listening to this and watching this are real estate agents themselves. And you might wonder the why, you know, okay, I'm busy, busy real estate, I don't have time for this. Um, you're going to learn an awful lot from this course as a real estate agent. You're going to learn a lot of the other sides of the development business. You're going to learn how you can actually make better money out of it yourself and how you can be extraordinarily useful to your clients who will hire you to sell these the projects on their behalf or how you could do some little projects, how you could recognize the right properties that perhaps you should pick up yourself. So I think you'll find as a realtor, this course is going to be phenomenal value. You never know, you might pick some clients up from it too. I'm exactly. a realtor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, great to learning networking opportunity. And um, best of all, um, you can actually take the course for free because if you invest at least 10000 you can get it all back. So, um, And there's an opportunity to... Uh, to, to earn up to 20% if people decide they want to participate uh, in a more significant way. So um, give us a call if you have questions. If you want to reserve your spot, um, you've got the page there uh, to do so. Um, if you change your mind, you get all your money back within 10 days, minus a $35 admin fee, but at least your, your spot is uh, registered. And I know uh, companies, uh, Harry, that are offering training and um, these are with people who specialize in in just uh, teaching and you wonder how many of them actually have been there and actually have done development so you have an opportunity to learn from a seasoned developer thank you okay Harry thanks very much and thanks to everybody uh, very much for uh, joining us if you have further questions uh, give me a call and we'll make sure uh, everything gets answered. Appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you on the course. Have a nice evening, everybody.